just cruising through the construction. It's shockingly comfortable. <laughs> area but I'm trying to figure out what all these little things are on the side of the road. I think they're tarantulas. Nevada and Arizona and some other areas have like a migration of them periodically. Exit. Oh they're like locusts or something. Good lord. They are. They're like crickets. They're not tarantulas, they're crickets or locusts. Yeah, they look like locusts. I just want to give you an idea of what I'm like. The, f the road is moving. <laughs> it's so gross. Oh god. So, I will sign off and keep killing crickets on my way to Austin. the Cozy Mountain Motel, Austin, Nevada. <laughs> it was uh, really nice. I'm holding off on starting my motor because it is basically 6.15, so I'm trying to be kind of polite before I head out of here. All right. I go down around the corner and get everything booted up. I will be keeping an eye on my gas mileage today just because I need at least 38 to get there without running out of gas. <laughs> Which shouldn't be a problem, but I just want to make sure. Austin's honestly pretty damn nice. It's kind of up on the mountains here to stay cooler than the surrounding terrain, and it's just neat. I did drop my tire pressures, so I'm about 25 front and rear. But according to the map and everything, this first section is pretty fast. It says you can make pretty good time. And then things kind of get more technical as I get closer to Elko. It's supposed to be near 90 today, which is also why I'm out super early because the further I can get today before it gets hot, the better. We'll see how many crickets I see today. It is a Mormon cricket explosion, and uh, they are swarming like crazy. The number of crickets that I saw on the way down here was just incredible. Yeah, crickets. Though apparently they're called Mormon crickets, but I guess they're not actually crickets. Um, they can't fly, which I'm really glad of actually, <laughs> because if they could fly, I would have been dodging those damn things like birds all of yesterday. And that would have sucked. But they're they're in the Katydid family. So that was it. That's just that was it. I was reading about them last night a little bit, but yeah, they're they're an interesting creature. They're also cannibalistic, so they think one of the reasons why they do these migrations is the ones in front are basically running from the ones behind them so they don't get eaten. And yeah, the, uh, the goal is Elko. I have water and food if I end up camping. So if I don't make it to Elko tonight, not a big deal. If I just end up going slow or whatever, I can camp up.
The Nevada BDR is definitely one of the fewer traveled BDRs. There's not a whole lot out there about it. And there's a cricket. Which is too bad, because I mean, it's really beautiful. It's just, I mean, Nevada's one of the least populated states in the nation. The BDR is quite remote. You don't have a whole lot of people that come out and do it. Which is too bad, because I mean, you can see, like, it's, it's gorgeous out here. But you do have to kind of travel a ways to get out here and do it. Nevada is kind of difficult also. The issue that you run into is trying to do the entire route in one go is very difficult because when the southern sections are very hot, sometimes the northern sections aren't even open yet. So kind of like what I'm dealing with right now of not being sure if Jarbridge is open to the border, even though it's gonna be 90 degrees today. A lot of people split it up like I am. So I'm doing just the northern part. And then when I come back and finish up California, I'll finish up the southern bits. That's a pretty common thing is to split it up because up north you'll have full on snow and weather, you know, like you have in Idaho and down south it's like Southern California. And so it's just really difficult to find a timing to where you can do the full route. You're gonna, you're gonna experience some temperature extremes probably no matter what. And this is the longest single section of any BDR without any services. It is a solid 220 miles from Austin to Elko and there is no services in between the two. So if you're doing this section, you absolutely have to have at least a 220 mile fuel range, preferably more, which obviously I do have. Here's more crickets. I would imagine I'll probably hit a few of these today. Where's the opening? Okay. Yeah, look at this guy. They're just, move. They're just everywhere. God, they're all in the tree, in the bushes. And obviously for like farmers and stuff, they are a huge menace. They might as well be locusts. They just can't fly, so they can't move as quickly. I just can't see. That's pretty loose in there. Let's go up high. There we go. But yeah, not really trying to move particularly fast or anything like that. Just steady progress. According to the description, I spend a fair amount of time on like a big gravel road, which it shows I'm in her. Oh, here's the Pony Express trail coming up. So the Pony Express was an express mail route that ran basically across Nevada and into California. I can't remember where it started. Uh, oh, here it is. But basically, it was before the railroad had been completed to connect to California. And they needed an express mail route, and they came up with the idea of basically riders on horses with stations about every 20 miles to swap out horses, and in some cases riders, and they would basically hand off the mail. And I would need to look at what the records were for um, fastest trip, and like how far they had to go and stuff, but it was quick. It was obviously very expensive, but it was, you know, it worked. And it was only in operation for about 18 months because basically it ran until the railroad connected. And then also telegraph lines took over for a lot of it because you had things that, a lot of it was messages and things like that. You didn't need to hand deliver the message if you had a telegraph line. But packages and all that then were able to run by train a lot cheaper and about as fast. And so yeah, you had young people, you know, the average age was 19 or 20, might even been younger than that, riding like hell for basically 18 months until it got shut down. But yeah, it's just a really interesting period in American history that we actually did that and it worked. Pony Express riders had to deal with bandits trying to steal the packages, Native Americans, heat, 
injuries. I mean, a lot, you know, it was, it was a dangerous friggin' thing. They got paid very well for it, but it was dangerous as hell. And a bunch of the, uh, old Wild West people, or Buffalo Bill Cody and, like, stuff like that, they claimed to have been Pony Express riders when, in reality, almost none of them were. Just about everything that a lot of those show people said they did was completely made up. The movie Hildalgo, which is a great movie. Like, don't get me wrong, I really love that movie. Oh, hi, cows. But basically everything that he said and everything about that movie was completely made up and fabricated. The races that he said that he took part in didn't exist. <laughs> I don't know if they were in Saudi Arabia or whatever, but whatever race it was that, you know, the Ring of Fire or whatever the hell they called it didn't exist. It wasn't a thing. Great movie. Completely fictional, though. <laughs> but this wasn't. People actually did this thing. They rode across here on a horse, which is pretty f***ing crazy. Yep, there's a sign for the Pony Express. There's a fair number of movies that either feature the Pony Express or were about the Pony Express. Obviously, some of them are fairly sensationalized, but it was cool, you know? It was a ballsy plan. I mean, how are we gonna get the mail across this empty quarter where we don't have a railroad or telegraph lines and we need to get packages and messages across as quickly as possible? Let's put kids on horses and have them ride like hell. But yeah, I mean, can, like, can you imagine coming across here on a horse with basically a canteen, a pistol, and a courier bag? I mean, they came across here with way less gear than what I'm carrying. I mean, I'm on a horse, sort of. But I'm going 200 miles today. They were doing 20 to 30 and then switching horses out. So let's see. Ooh, that's a big hole. Oh, there we go. Keep having to switch back and forth. I want the high ground because it's a little bit in better shape. And if you know Star Wars, you know you want the high ground. I don't hear him popping out on a road, it looks like, and saying goodbye to the Pony Express Trail. But yeah, there it goes. That's friggin' cool, though. I got to ride on the Pony Express Trail. Nope, oh, and we're back to dirt, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm on this for a minute doing great things for my gas mileage. I think this is a solar plant, maybe? I can't really see it yet. Could be a mine. Is it aren't here? Nope. It looks like a power plant of some type. I see a bunch of transmission lines. Classified government research facility. <laughs> McGinnis Hills. I couldn't read it. It looks like a power plant. Oh, you know, it could be geothermal. It's the right area for it. I'm not talking about much because there's just not much to talk about. Yeah, I'm just sitting here doing, you know, 50 on dirt going across Nevada. No big deal. That is so pretty. You know, there's nothing hard about this. You're just trying to make miles. But it's really beautiful. Lots of crickets in here. It just looks like the little rocks on the road are moving. And it's all the crickets. It's kind of creepy. I wonder if the cows eat them. I mean, they, you know, probably accidentally, if anything else, but... I would, I would think they would here and there. Cows aren't super bright and they'll eat just about anything. God, just look at all of them. It is interesting that basically all of them end up moving the same direction. I mean, it's literally just swarm logic. Like, the ones in the back are pushing the ones in the front further forward, but... It's just crazy how that works. That's really pretty. 
160 miles to Elko. God, the road is just moving. From left to right, just... Oh God, that's right, the lady at the gas station was saying sometimes they're so bad they have to get the snow plows out and scrape them off to the side of the road. Like, oh God. No, 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 no. Not that left, this left. Right? Zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. All right, third gear it is. And where the f am I going? Oh, straight. Okay. Oh, that other road comes back around. And we have a gate. Please close gate. Okay, cool. Shoe cricket, don't bother me. Oh, I'm just gonna go up here and re-intersect with this road, so I probably should have just stayed on that other road. But yeah, I'm only on this for, it's less than a mile from what it looks like on the map. Tomorrow, there's one of these diversions that I'm gonna skip because it, it diverts off the road to go and do a water crossing and it's the only reason you leave the road and by all accounts the water crossing is kind of gnarly so I'm just not going to try it Me and the crickets. The only people that come down here are BDR riders or the rancher, because it clearly doesn't get much traffic. I can't even see tire marks. Like, and the gate. Okay. Uh. That one was on my leg. Ugh, just <laughs> off. <laughs> They're so gross. Nevada gets kind of a bad rap for being just like open desert. And I think it's mostly because it's like 80% of the state's population lives in Vegas. And that's at the very southern tip of the state. You know, I'm quite a ways north of Vegas here, and it's not just open desert. It's grassland and scrub and mountains, and it's really pretty. <laughs> Roller coaster road. Whee. I don't expect that I'll get into Elko until 5 or so, but that's fine. I mean, hell, the sun's staying up until 9. Basically, my cutoff will be 7 o'clock. If, if I'm looking at it and seeing that I'm not going to get to Elko until at least 7, if not later, I'll stop and camp somewhere. That's really rutted up. They definitely came down here when it was wet. And there's a fence. Oh, I see it. Okay. That's how that works. All right. say I kind of just go up through this little ridge of mountains and come back out onto another road on the other side but we'll see really pretty got some of the first bike tracks that I've seen I don't want to mess with the bulls can you move please Thank you. 
Oh. Let's go first. That's actually pretty steep. But yeah, you cross over one of these little mountain ranges and then you go back out onto the flats. And it's just that pattern all the way east and west. Highway 50, which is what goes through Austin, is referred to as the loneliest highway in America. It has one of the longest stretches without gas that you can have in the United States. But yeah, I mean, this, this isn't even particularly technical riding. It's just, you gotta stay awake because you're going downhill and there's a lot of loose rock. But overall, your traction's really good. That's cool. And this looks like it might be a mess. We're gonna stay over here as much as I can. Oh yeah. And ride the ruts. Nope. <clears throat> yep. Talcum powder. So we're going slow. Nobody coming. Big old road. Cut just straight as an arrow across this thing. No gate. That's my biggest fear with those things, is coming up on one of those and not realizing there's a gate closed, or you know, a fence across it until I'm right up on it. Because that would hurt a lot. That is an E, oh God, hello. Hi, Vulture. <laughs> God, it's not even 10 o'clock. I haven't stopped and taken a break yet, mostly because I don't wanna wait for it to get hot. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get as much mileage done before it really gets hot as I can. God, this bike is just so good. This is, as far as I am concerned, the perfect adventure bike. Like, is it perfect? No. Are there things you can do to make it better? Sure. But is there a better adventure bike on the market right now that can do all the things that this bike can do? And I don't think the answer to that is yes. There are competitors, and there are bikes that are pretty similar, but I don't think that any of them are better than this. You know, the Adventure R definitely is a competitor. Tour Egg 660, the Ducati Desert X when it comes out, you know, stuff like that. They're absolutely competitors for this bike. But what I don't think is that they're better. The biggest thing that this bike has the advantage on is reliability over all of those other designs. The KTMs have been having problems basically since they came out. And a lot of it's stuff that's just known to not be really great on the KTMs, which sucks because it's like, guys, fix it. The Touareg seems to be an excellent bike, but you know, it's an Aprilia. Like, nobody really knows how reliable it's gonna be, and the support network isn't there. How many Aprilia dealerships are in the entire United States? How are you gonna be able to get parts? How are you gonna be able to get a chain and filters and you know all the stuff that you need to be able to do long distance travel on these bikes? By all accounts, the Aprilia is a really nice bike. I would love to test ride one and kind of check it out. The reliability is a great big question mark. 
and on this bike it's not. The uh, Ducati, it's going to be the same thing. Like, it, it's probably going to be a great bike, but at the end of the day, it is still a Ducati. Maintenance is going to be expensive, or difficult, or both. Alright, we're going to work our way through the mountains here. And then I go back to going north when I pop out on the other side. I believe, yeah. So I have less than 100 miles to Elko. My fuel range meter has still not dropped even one bar. So I know I have more than enough range to get there on this tank. I've got 130 miles basically on this tank. I would expect my first bar will drop somewhere around 150. I should get there with basically just under half a tank indicated. This looks like it might be kind of sandy. And it did say it gets more technical as you get close to Elko. We're gonna find out. After that stuff in Utah, I just, I don't ride just into it and hope for the best. <laughs> This bike is able to handle sand, it just handles it better at a little bit lower of a speed. So far this is all in pretty good shape, it's hard pack. It's loose in the middle, obviously, I mean you can see that, but this is all fine. Well, I'm going straight. <laughs> there I can see tire marks from somebody. Yep, nice, easy to track. Works for me. Yep, nothing crazy. Just definitely slower. You know, you can't just blast through here. Whew, it is a warm day now. I'm so glad I got going as early as I did. You couldn't do this if it was wet. You'd be skiing through mud for 15 miles. I need you to move, buddy. Thank you. straight across. Excuse me. This reminds me of Wyoming a little bit. The sand was deeper in Wyoming, but the trail was very similar to this. Sure, there's a road there. If you say so. It's narrow. Ooh, there we go. I would love it if this would open up into a little bit better of a road without as much ruts. Oh, I didn't even see the fence. This is just going to be slow going. It's not super difficult. It's just you cannot go fast at any point. Oh, that's deep. Come on. Don't do this to me now. Second gear it is. Talk about the middle of nowhere. Oh, thankfully this bike handles way better in sand than it did on the California BUR. <sighs> Commence the uh, heavy breathing portion of today. It's really hot. The bike is still doing good at staying cool. The fans basically cycling on and off still versus just staying on. I wish I could say the same for me. Let's go over here. And tomorrow I might see snow. <laughs> Welcome to Nevada. This would not be the time to be finding out that you don't have the fuel range to make it. Cause uh, where the hell would you go? Again, the challenge really isn't the riding. Like, it's relatively straightforward. The issue is the heat, and it's just reflecting off of the dirt. So you're just sitting here cooking. God, the amount of heat that I can just feel coming up off the ground is incredible. Oh, there's a little bit of wind. Oh God, 
I needed that. Oh yeah, okay. Just just stay like this for a while. I don't think I'm gonna Oh Grasshopper, God. Oh, hit me right in the face. God, I was wearing glasses. 93 according to that. Only 36 miles from Elko, so I'm doing really well. And here's pavement. Man, I got a headache. Like, I've been doing everything I can to stay hydrated. Alright, I will see you in Elko.